When you're younger and fairly fit, you don't really think too much about old age. You just think, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to be different. I shall keep active and I'll be fine. In retirement, I wanted to continue my dancing, my gardening. My health started to deteriorate and um, everything just kind of almost collapsed around me. In the UK, 300,000 patients suffer fragility fractures every year. It does affect you mentally, I think, as well. You know, it's um, depressing. And I began to think that that was it. That's old age, I thought. You're an old lady now. Pack it in, close down, don't do anything. We certainly know that within Wandsworth there's a particularly high incidence of hip fractures. Because of that, uh, we want to be picking up patients early on um, in their diagnosis of osteoporosis and identify them before their first fracture occurs, or at least when the first minor fracture occurs, perhaps a wrist fracture in their 60s, and if we can pick them up and treat them then, then we are likely to prevent them having a hip fracture in their 80s. And we know that hip fractures and vertebral fractures are associated with a very high morbidity and mortality. But picking up the signs of this silent epidemic isn't always an easy thing to do. I have 10 minutes with a patient and to remember all the risk factors for osteoporosis when somebody's come to address a different issue is sometimes difficult to bring that to the forefront of my consultation. One, because of the time pressures, and secondly, because I admit I don't remember all the risk factors for osteoporosis. So I fear that there are patients who are slipping through the net for this reason. GPs are no doubt aware that risk factors such as age, female gender, family history and ethnicity can make a diagnosis of osteoporosis more likely. Females who are postmenopausal or post-hysterectomy are at risk due to the changes in oestrogen levels. Other risk groups are those with rheumatoid arthritis, or if a male patient, he might suffer from primary or secondary hypogonadism. And then lifestyle factors such as alcohol, smoking, Insufficient exercise or frequent falls can be associated with poor bone health. As can inadequate calcium intake, underlying digestive disorders and reduced vitamin D production. Even then for the patient, the diagnosis can be the start of a long journey. Firstly, the news often doesn't sink in and I think secondly, people often don't understand the importance of their diagnosis. Um, and when you first give them the news, they're often you know, in shock, so they can't take on all the added extras. As a GP, I try to give them a patient information leaflet so they can go away and think about it and come back to me if they have any issues. But often patients don't come back to me, so I think it's really important for us to be able to signpost on to a service such as the Bone Boost service to be able to, to mop up what we can't do as GPs. Set up in 2012 specifically to deal with the problems of bone health in Wandsworth, the Bone Boost service is the first of its kind in the country. It's fully funded and has capacity for 700 patients a year. The ethos behind the Bone Boost uh, clinics is the earlier we intervene in, in a patient's journey, uh, the more effective we can be and to give them the appropriate lifestyle advice and implement changes to their way of living so that, that we can bring in uh, the evidence-based practice for them, change their diet, uh, get them to do weight loading exercises through their bones, but also site-specific um, strength training because there is a wealth of evidence out there that um, just strengthening the muscles alone can increase the bone density of um, specific bones. Up you go. Look up, look up. <laughs> Good, so just to the chest. In regular physiotherapy sessions, yeah, exercises are tailored right. to each individual patient. These can also be delivered in a patient's home if needed. Yeah. Much better. Yeah. So, and up. Up, up, good. The patients have actually really enjoyed uh, 
the social uh, impact of, of the classes in that they actually make new friends. They've all got um, uh, bone health disease and whether that's early stages or much later. So the, the group sort of provide a, a, a support network for themselves, um, but also that they enjoy the exercise doing it together. The clinic can also make sure that the patient is following their prescribed drug regime. And we're going to point our toes. Adhering to NICE guidelines, this would be a bone sparing agent, such as Alondronate, plus calcium and vitamin D. Complementing the bone boost service, ones with GPs will be supported with the osteoporosis quaff through the Prostrac and Pharmaceuticals audit. We know nationally and in fact internationally that compliance with bone health medication is very poor. Um, that's possibly because Alondronate, they take it once a week, it's a very large tablet. And, and perhaps people underestimate the importance of taking it. And also there's no visible changes, and certainly patients say to us, I don't feel any different. We're actually bringing a pharmacist into the team, uh, and that's to make sure that everybody is adequately educated and knowledgeable in the team. And then we will also have a specialist practitioner role uh, for osteoporosis, and that's largely around supporting compliance of medication as well as the lifestyle changes. All right, off we go. The Bone Boost Clinic knows that the key is keeping patients enthusiastic. That's it, brilliant. They've started Nordic walking classes and plan to expand them into parks across Wandsworth. Yes. So you plant the pole, land on the foot again. With Zumba classes starting as well, Bone Boost is already proving a successful model for its patients. From the beginning, I think everybody was a bit sort of not quite sure. But um, as the weeks progressed, I think everybody really feels you can see the group, you know, being more confident and more, you know, willing to stretch that bit further. Every week, I really and truly look forward to coming and to see the different ways in which I can strengthen myself and so on. And having the physio um, there to explain, like when I was getting pain, what that pain might be about and whether to worry about it or not to worry about it was really, really crucial for me. The stage I am now is far removed from where I was when I first came. It's wonderful that these things exist, you know, you know that you've been given the chance to come. If as a GP you have a query about a patient with osteoporosis or you, you're not sure what to do, we're very happy to um, receive queries by email or telephone and we're very happy to um, speak to GPs about those patients. And also the Bone Boost service um, will be a good source of expert advice in, in that area as well. While still local to Wandsworth, Bone Boost aims to be the national leader and show the way forward for the treatment of osteoporosis. I have a personal connection to this as my mother-in-law fractured her hip some 10 years ago and I I think it's had a huge impact on her life. Apart from spending a long time in hospital, she had virtually no rehabilitation and very little education on bone health. And it's had a social and physical impact on her life. And I wish this sort of service had been around when she fractured her hip. Well done everybody, you worked really hard.